And we are live. Uh, welcome to this latest episode of Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie, and uh, as ever, I'm joined by Charles Maxson. Hi, Charles. Hey, Martin. Hello, everyone. Hey, Steve. And Steve as well. Hello, Steve. Hi, Martin. Hi, Charles. Hello, everyone. So I think this is quite an interesting topic, and it's something that I find I'm often asked when I do presentations out and about about uh, Google Apps Script is how you know how do you manage Google Apps Script in an enterprise environment? Um, you know, uh, and at various levels, it's you know it's not just the the code; it's the politics as as well. Of um, everyone, I guess, doesn't want to have shadow IT <laughs> lurking around. I guess they don't want that, or do they, Charles? Do they want shadow uh, IT? <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I've seen enterprises that are like users do whatever you need to to be successful. I've seen other enterprises that are like we lock everything down because we need to have that visibility and control. And I've s seen gradients in between, um, but it's absolutely a challenge, right? If it if it's you know the, the proverbial case I hear is you know we built a solution, you know, whether a user, uh, a citizen developer, a power user, whatever built it, you can, whatever term you use. Or even a professional person built it, but then left and can't maintain it or can't find it or can't support it. It's a challenge. And so how do you manage that type of environment is a huge concern. Um, and I think it's something that, that we hear a lot. And Steve, I know that you know it's something you do for a living is you work with, with small and large enterprises. Um, you clearly run through this a lot, right? It's probably a big issue in the work you do, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, sometimes when you're done with a project, you're not really done. There's the knowledge of transfer. And so a lot of times they may want to dock with lots of pictures and or a video recording, which is kind of like a demo, which is nice because they can use that for onboarding people using that solution. So, yeah. Yeah. And so I understand uh, we're turning to the Netherlands today to talk about that. we got a couple of different folks. For that. There you go. So Martin's going to uh, represent uh, a little love uh, from the Netherlands. Um, but here we go. We've got two leading experts from the Netherlands to talk about this topic. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. I guess the the first question is, there seems to be, you know, we come off the back of a, a previous show with um, with Rio Norman again. Is there, uh, I, I guess, we'll, we'll get to intros in a second. I'm more interested in this. Is there <laughs> like this ecosystem of app script and Google Workspace developers in the Netherlands that the world should be looking at? Um, we, <laughs> we know each other. Or are we looking at them now? Are we looking at no, two thirds? It's, it's, uh, there are more, there are more, way more. Um, but it's it's kind of, for us, it's, it's, it's we, we know who, who is who in, in, uh, in the Netherlands. It's a small country. So the question is, of the answer is basically yes. Uh, there is there is a nice ecosystem. Well, if you've got secrets and you've perfected it, I think it's it's great that you're here and you're sharing. So we, we appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. So we've met Jasper before, but Nick, you're a new face to the show. Do you want to just uh, give us a bit of background about what you do, who you work for? Yeah. Yeah. Hi all. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Nick Wabruk. I'm CTO at Nextnovate, uh, a Google Cloud partner. Uh, with, with a dedicated focus on mid-size and enterprise companies. Um, and we help uh, companies to get the most out of Google Workspace, uh, which basically means uh, we uh, migrate them to Google Workspace and uh, optimize work processes so they, are, they perfectly fit on Google Workspace, which a lot of development gets involved. In, in term, are you migrating a lot of kind of Microsoft customers? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with uh, 365 customers, so that's, uh, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and Jasper, we've had you on before, but I, I do you want to just give people a quick shout to, uh, about what you do? Yes, sure. Uh, Jasper Duistra, I'm an independent, independent cloud architect. And lately, or well, for a long time already, I've been working on integration, uh, solving integration problems, migration problems to uh, Google, some also from Google to Microsoft, to be honest. And uh, the last few, last time I've been working more on, on, on larger, 
infiltrations of environments. So basically looking at the customers, okay, what kind of Google services in the broadest sense of the word are you using? So one of the use cases I have now with some Microsoft customers uh, that used to use Google said, no, we are not, we are not using Google anymore. So, yes, you are. Uh, and uh, you're using analytics. So then suddenly you're looking more at Google like an identity management system for the other Google services. And then slowly you see, okay, yes, there is Google and then you find Google Cloud Platform. So looking at what what is this company actually using from the Google, Google system? That's what I'm working on mostly uh, mm. lately. Yeah. So that's a great sub, uh, segue. And I'd love to talk more about interrupts, but we'll hold that for another show or towards the end. Um, but today we want to talk about, obviously, you know, the type of applications you build and you serve customers of all sizes, right? And, and, and some of those things. So one thing I'd love to hear, and I think everybody would love to hear, is kind of jump in and, you know, talk about, you know, where is Google Apps Script suitable for these large organizations? Like, what are some of the solutions you're building? What's some of the uh, the reasons you're bringing into these companies? Yes, for all right. <laughs> let, let me start. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely suitable. It's, it's natively integrated in, in Google Workspace, uh, which uh, just gives you superpowers. And, uh, customers have custom needs. And uh, one of the coolest tools I've built is, the, uh, I think, um, an add-on for an asset management uh, system binder. And uh, we deployed it to several uh, countries. And uh, I think 36,000 users are using it. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it was a bit of effort. And uh, yeah, it, I'm kind of proud of it. So uh, yeah, it was cool. I, dare I ask, 36,000 users, are you paid by the user? No, just kidding. Don't <laughs> <worry>. No. <laughs> no, How but, you the, but the users... Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah the, the users uh, were quite happy. So they, they, they uh, uh, have the SS management uh, directly in, in slides and docs. And it, yeah, it, it, it's natively, so it's, it's perfect for them. How about you, Jasper? What do you what do you see mostly? What are some of the use cases that you're you're doing with AppScript these days? For, for me, it changed over time a bit. In the beginning, it was mostly uh, building applications around Google Drive, a uh, few document management solutions. Uh, one of my oldest applications uh, was a use case where a company they had uh, well a policy of uh, people getting a Gmail account. And then you and then they went Google, so then you have the concept of conflicting accounts. And then you have a whole set of people that that have G, uh, Google Docs documents in, in their Gmail environment. So actually, in that case, I wrote an app script application that the people would fire up, then it would analyze their drive, and then it would create a sheet. That sheet would contain all their files, and within the same process, still working in a Gmail environment. Uh, would share the files with their enterprise accounts and then later on i would process with another application all the sheets and then move all the files into their environment long story but th that's exactly a use case where i, I love uh, app script because you have a program that runs in the context of the user which scales up to well, apparently thirty-six thousand people um, <laughs> but it scales endlessly and it's also it's it's just there you have your environment and I've thought a lot, a little bit about the application. Like, should I do it the same way today? Uh, things have changed a bit. Um, nowadays, for me, it's more about integration problems. Uh, it it works absolutely great there. You just you 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 build a spreadsheet, and then uh, you you take in all the, the the information from the systems, compare them, run some app script, and you you have your platform. It's already there. So that's for that's those are the applications I write, write mostly at the moment. Uh, I for the the people that were joining AppScript Day Zero, it, it was it's been an interesting evolution over the time uh, in terms of you could write a script container bound, and once you wrote that script and shared it, it's like bye bye script, <laughs> <laughs> I'll never see you again. 
uh, and obviously things have, I think, re responded as a consequence to that. So we can now develop script, app scripts and um, to, to work in, in Google Sheets and still maintain the, the, those scripts. It's no longer bye-bye. Are there com kind of common patterns you use in that scenario or? Well, uh, for enterprise, well, for enterprises, we, we usually create uh, libraries a lot because uh, if you build a library, you can improve your uh, library over and over, so it, it gets more reliable. Um, so I, I think that that's an, uh, a common use case. So, so uh, we always use libraries to, to, to keep improving those libraries, and, and yeah, that makes uh, yeah. The, the failures uh, uh, smaller uh, by the times. So, yeah, this, yeah. Uh, I have a question as well. Um, so let's say we're someone's watching this program right now, and maybe they're on this Upwork platform. They get this opportunity working with a large enterprise. Uh, then they sell their solution. They like it. Uh, where do they start? Do they start within their domain, their account, or? Do, do you find enterprises rather have you create an account in their system, their domain, and then they can watch you perhaps, or, or it's somewhat monitored and they kind of own it from the beginning. Uh, so how do you usually approach that? Do you do a little bit in on your domain or do you start working on their domain? I, I always have a version, uh, at least a test version on my uh, domain of obviously no uh, company data in my domain. And uh, for me, uh, sometimes I have up to four uh, different uh, instances of the same application. So uh, test and more like uh, development in my own environment and uh, the same at the company. Or if I work with a third party, um, which is common use case, I have a environment at the third party with the product manager at that side. So we can I can test, I have two customers then, one where that's the final customer and one that's in between. And so then I have at least four systems, one at the third party test development and production test at the customer. So for me, it's very important to, to be able to, to have a whole development uh, pipeline. Well. I also, uh, it, it depends on, on the size of a, a customer, I think. Uh, we see a lot that uh, only the IT department can deploy the code within their organization. So, uh, yeah, you need to develop on your own environment and provide uh, a lot of documentation or whatever to the, that IT department and, and they will deploy it and test it and so on. So, 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 so that's, a great, that's a great point. And I, and I was chatting with Jasper before the show and he mentioned a lot of times he works directly with the business users. Right, the folks looking for the solution. Nick, you mentioned you, you a lot of times you're, you're, you're working with IT. What is the environment with these large enterprises? Um, what do you see more commonly or how do you, I don't want to say get around IT because that sounds a little uh, sheepish, but how do you make sure that you're working with them in their principles in a comfortable way that they're confident, but also you're not blocked or you're, you're not you know, slowing down things for not just the user, but frankly, for your engagement in your project. So you can, you can move at a speed that, that makes sense for the business. Yeah, yeah. Um... But uh, in most customers, we migrated them to Google Workspace. So you are, are already friends with IT department. And, uh, <laughs> you, you think, you think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you must be. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the relation is already there. And, okay. uh, and uh, when a business person uh, uh, comes to you for a, a certain uh, application, uh, we directly uh, uh, ask, uh, well, we need the IT department to deploy the application. So uh, we directly get uh, IT involved. But is this something we can do? And uh, in most cases, uh, a security officer comes by to see what scopes are required. And um, so, so first of all, we check if everything uh, uh, is in place uh, to make it a success. And if so, then we uh, uh, develop it on our, our uh, own environment and uh, the customer can test on our environment. And once it's completely done, it, we hand it over to the IT department 
and they can start deploying it within their organization. So uh, to keep uh, to keep it going, we develop on our environment and test on our uh, environment. But first, we check if the solution will be deployed uh, uh, according uh, the regulations of the organization. Well, that makes sense. J Jasper, obviously, you, you get a lot of opportunities on the other side of the coin there, right? You work directly with businesses. How is your experience and, frankly, how is your approach different to kind of win over IT or, like I said, kind of coexist with IT? Uh, it, it depends on the on the company, uh, obviously. Um, if if IT is approachable and and has procedures, uh, you work you work with those procedures. Sometimes also, um, yeah, I have to say sorry uh, afterwards. Like uh, I go directly to the customers, make more like a prototype, and then you just need to be very careful with. Okay, are you? You need to be okay. There's GDPR. There are you need to know what you're doing basically. Right. And if you have everything in check and you can, okay, IT, and IT starts asking questions, so, no, this is correct and this is correct and uh, I know what I'm doing, uh, then sometimes you can get away with it, but preferably, absolutely work directly with IT. So, but a, but a, but a good question on that, a good follow-up on that is, okay, so say IT finds out that you're in there helping the, you know, the accounting team do something. Um, what do you say to IT or how do you convince IT that AppScript is is safe and the right solution in the enterprise. Like, how do you validate what you're already doing? How do you make them feel comfortable? Um, sometimes compare it to to other stuff. Like, okay, uh, you know, I, I had a huge, I had an issue with GDPR uh, because of an application I developed in Nice, but it was exactly the same as an existing application. So I assumed that it was okay. Um, and so th those are approaches. And at the end, it's about the technology. Is it actually okay? So if, as long as you can prove it, it's okay. But it, it has changed a, a lot in a sense. And I think for the better, by the way, that uh, in the beginning, you could get away with a lot of things because IT didn't have much control. Now you, you, the, the control is with IT. There's lot, there, there are lots, lots of way of tightening the system so you cannot do anything. To get the scopes and so and stuff so but at the end um, you can also work a little bit in between so okay this is a prototype to work with the customer directly and then once we say okay this is okay then move on to a, a serious process so that's that's also a way and sometimes the prototype is good enough for the application for the time being i think also, a difference between the, the, the type of applications I built and the, the type uh, Nick uh, has, is building is mine are usually short-lived. They solve a problem and then they go away. Got it. And that's also pretty important. If, mm -hmm. if So you need to be very aware of, of all the problems that if you leave or, um, yeah, applications, they, they have to be supported. So yeah. a short-lived application does not need support. The moment you need support, you need IT. So that's actually a great kind of segue to two main questions. I think uh, we're all kind of ready to ask you here is, um, I had a fun question I would ask is, what is your oldest application still in use? Hold that thought before you answer. Um, but one of the things I hear a lot from enterprises is, they're really worried about what you said, Jasper, is, is Great, you came in here as an expert and you built this, but when you left, who takes care of it? Who 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 manages it? And, and Nick, you mentioned you work with IT to, to deploy it, but eventually you leave and then somebody is left owning it. And I've heard people say that you know an app script app is often like a free puppy. It's cute, it's cuddly, and it's fun to play with. But then, <laughs> then the owner leaves and you're stuck holding it, you still have to feed it and take it out every day, or there's consequences. Um, how do you how do you manage that transition? Well, with most customers, for for the most important applications, we have support contracts. So uh, we do monthly checkups if, if APIs are have changes uh, which, which need to be fixed in, in our application. So in, in most cases, we have support contracts for that. So uh, yeah, we maintain the application. In, in and, terms and, and, of and we, yeah, in terms of maintaining, so it, 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 are, are you you mentioned libraries before? Is it generally it's finding bugs in libraries and pushing updates? 
Yeah, yeah. It, um, it, it depends on the customer, but, but um, mm -hmm. uh, when you when you have large enterprises, they they have their own solution how to deploy an application. So you you are you you don't get the freedom to push something to their mm -hmm. code. So it, yeah, you need to describe what you changed and why did you change it, and and then they have solutions to copy your code. Uh, into a, a test environment and production. So, yeah. Another thought yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, piggyback off from that comment. Um, sometimes when you, when you know you have to support the solution, uh, I usually have the team think about design and support right away uh, because that may help with, uh, it's like, for example, one sales pitch I may say to a client is, um, we will know there's a problem before you are even aware, so it's more proactive. And we'll, we may have it resolved before you even know it was a problem, right? So that's that's like a good um, insurance. So with that comment, let me ask the question, um, for those that you may have to support, what types of things do you do in the code? Do you wrap um, certain logic to say, if this routine fails, go through this process of notification or do you say, hey, I'm going to trap this error, and this error is usually because of an admin administrative setting, and tell the user, contact the administrator to solve this problem, which reduces your support. So any thoughts or comments on that? It, uh, it, uh, now I remember which one is the lo long li longest living application, uh, because <laughs> I still get emails from it. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't remember. No, but uh, I love cloud logging, and um, the, the, there, are, there are many ways. And I think the, the, what you said is absolutely right. If you are building an application that you know that needs to be maintained, you need to start upfront with with that perspective. So for me, there's a huge difference between a short-lived and a long-lived application. And another advantage of AppScript is it it mostly keeps running. Uh, it doesn't break easily. So if it runs for a year, it will run usually for another year, uh, in my experience at least. And the other thing is, it's I see it more like a challenge. Uh, you, you you write your code in a way that you know, okay, it needs to be robust, resilient, uh, and uh, if you don't if you don't write good code, you know you have to solve the problem yourself. At least that's my experience. But at the end, uh, about notifications, uh, a Google Cloud project uh, and cloud monitoring, so that's more like going into the broader uh, uh, Google services uh, and notifications and good instructions. Because the one, one huge pitfall, for me at least, is giving people uh, a spreadsheet for the configuration and they mess up the spreadsheet. And that can be something stupid like mm. uh, a space or uh, because my logic is not everybody's logic uh, uh, in those cases. So being very careful with uh, who uh, maintains the configuration. That probably uh, also, uh, also a good thing is, is to protect ranges in, in sheets. Yes. So if you have a configuration <laughs> sheets with, with different headers, Please protect them. There's always somebody who, who makes a mistake in, in the headers, and yeah. It, this may uh, lead on to a question from uh, I'm the Nacho Man. Uh, so it's you know, <laughs> going on. It's uh, you know the the issues around giving edit access, particularly associated with triggers. Uh, so, but the broad question: How how, how do you collaborate? in Google Apps Script. Do you have particular approaches you use for that? Jasper, I think you've got uh, quite a well-developed. Um, yeah, here it's 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 very important to, to, okay, are you a citizen developer or are you more in the enterprise or uh, other types of development? For me, uh, Clasp and Git. Um, and one of the nicest uh, use cases for me uh, is, is is, is the combination of the of the, the the cloud editor, not the app script editor actually, but the cloud uh, cloud editor, then uh, combined with Clasp. So basically, in my repository, I have a version of the code, or somebody changed the version of the code for me. First thing I do is fire up the editor, uh, do a Clasp 
pull the code and then I see differences because one of the pitfalls with AppScript is people can change stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's not compiled, it's easy to change something. So I need to know upfront, is my code the same as the last time as I left it? And then the collaboration, uh, it's, it's mostly through Git and otherwise other places is, is, uh, is uh, libraries. Again, uh, still difficult to maintain in my opinion in AppScript, uh, but libraries uh, help a lot. Nick, do you do you have a, a similar approach when it comes to collaboration in AppScript? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's not like docs that you, you can work together in, in in the online editor. So so you need another approach for that. And uh, luckily, we have Clasp uh, for that. And, and indeed, we also have a, a Git repository to maintain the code. Yeah, I think uh, it, you know, I, 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 it's like I. Uh, kind of the, the amount of Google Apps Script development I get to do is is quite minimal. So, um, but the the GitHub Assistant within the editor, the, the Apps Script IDE is is it's the tool I use constantly, and it's a similar process of pulling, pushing code, and just checking what what's changed. So that's another way of approaching it uh, along similar lines. Um, it's, I think we have another question. Uh, let's see, gas jobs can and do fail because of internal errors and so forth. And we usually use uh, exponential back off, which is you can actually have your line of code and then you wrap it with a function that says run that function. If it fails, wait a few nanoseconds, whatever, milliseconds and then I'll try again and try maybe up to three times. A lot of times that gets you through those internal errors. And if it finally does fail, then you want to gracefully re, you know, communicate that back or notification. So that's one technique that you could use. Any other comments on that? No, we, we use also uh, an expansion, exponential backup, uh, especially for, for background processes. So yeah, ninety nine percent of the failures uh, will be a success uh, when uh, just retrying the, the same uh, code. What what I um, you mentioned, Martin? You mentioned uh, about writing less code. Um, also in the in AppScript the, the journey, what I see is that the, you start with AppScript, and at some point you you're seeing the bigger picture and uh, also see the other services of Google. And for me uh, at the moment, it's mostly about combining those. So it's, it's, it's one of the tools, it's, it's not my tool. It's also very important to, to know, okay, when do you switch from AppScript to another, uh, to another platform or when is it not the right solution? Nick and I were discussing a little bit uh, earlier today. And one very clear sign is also if you start running out of time might sound, sound a little bit strange, but if people start talking about time management to me, they're either, for me, there are a few things. Either they don't understand the problem, uh, the, the, the platform, because there are different ways of sol solving it. It's like, I just need more than, than six minutes. I need seven minutes, okay. But what if it was one minute, should not make a difference. But at the end, uh, one of the signs that you're on the wrong track is if you are uh, creating multiple accounts to manage your time. At least that's in my experience that in a few projects that I did that and I was like, this is absolutely going in the wrong direction. So at some point, AppScript absolutely start, stops as a platform and you need to look at different solutions. So let me, let me ask you a question on that because you made that sound easy, right? You can look at a problem and triage it and figure out what tools you're gonna use. Do you have a guide though, if you could share somebody listening, um, the uh, three-step checklist or I mean you can't just stick your finger in the air and kind of guess at it. How do you know I can do this in abstract? Or do you or do you start doing it and figure out if it fails? Which which is your what's your approach? Budget. Okay. Budget is a very clear one. Sometimes people just say, okay, there is no budget. And budget in the sense they don't want uh to run it in the cloud, they don't. Uh, it can be as simple as obtaining a credit card. Obtaining a credit card or a billing uh, account can be difficult in an enterprise, on its own. Um, 
the rest it's it's proved to make that sub objective is, is pretty difficult it's it's um long processing processing a lot of stuff and especially scaling if you in app script uh, if you scale uh, if you have something that uh, uh, is for a lot of users, you need to be able to run it as the user because yeah. that's the only way you can scale. So if you process 10,000 users uh, or 1,000 users, the, that the difference should be in how you run it uh, with the authentication. But at the end, it's more like, yeah, yeah a good feeling, I think, uh, difficult to explain. Yeah, Maybe you need also, yeah, also a bit of experience, I think. Yeah. So uh, if you come at a point uh, that app script fails because uh, you have six hours a day and you need to figure out another solution, uh, yeah, usually yeah, you can uh, build your code from scratch and, and think in, in other ways. But basically yeah, what a customer does is creating two accounts and separate code and run tries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, two versions of that app, app script which makes, makes it also uh, difficult to maintain. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a bit of feeling and, and a bit of experience. Uh, and, and at front, uh, 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 keep an eye on the project size. What, what, are, what is the size of the project? I, I think that that's very important uh, yeah, to yeah. have a look at. And, and one example also, I think Nick, experience is an important one that at some point, are you actually uh, are you still solving the wrong the right the, the, the right problem? I remember once that I needed some concurrency, so I had enough time. Of, I I wanted to run processes in parallel, which basically is pretty difficult in AppScript, but I can solve the problem, no problem. So I made a web page where I called the services, and at some point I ran 12, 1,200 services in AppScript simultaneously. was, yay, uh, great. Uh, uh, but I was not solving the right problem. But it worked. <laughs> so it, it's, it's like, am I still on the right track? Is this still OK? So And that's experience. And also, you need to be able to, to you need to know the other tools. You need to know uh, at this moment, for example, if I, if I do an investigation on Google Drive, I started with the virtual machine in Python. Now I'm on Cloud Run with Go. Uh, so yeah, that, that's just because I, I want to understand the tooling in between was Cloud Functions and app, uh, app Engine. So if you do not know the alternatives, it's difficult to compare. That's right. So you need to look further than App Script, but then still, uh, it's it is also something needs to apply to the problems that you want to solve. Now you're right, and you mentioned, I, mean, I think it segues right into what you said, you mentioned that a lot, you expect some of your projects to be shorter lifespans, right? Because they're solving a problem and then they're they're retiring themselves, uh, which makes great sense. Um, and, and again, you, you, you get a feel for that. Um, what, is there times you sit down, are there things you go, these are anti-patterns, right? These are things that you just shouldn't even try in App Script. Like what are some of the things you look at a project and go, you know, that we're in the wrong place. We shouldn't even start here. Is there anything that, that you would come to mind? I mean, obviously size or, yeah, I mean, well, what are some of the things you quickly know? Like give us an example of something you may quickly know that, you know, this should not uh, go forward here. Nick? Uh, uh, but make, maybe if you uh, have something to do with, with authorization, if, if you need uh, 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 a lot of sensitive scopes, uh, okay. uh, and, and it runs as a user, for example, yeah, that, that can go crazy. So, yeah, we often try to, to do, uh, provide an API with, with all the, the sensitive stuff and, and make an, an, an simple script which uses the API, uh, yeah. which runs as an other user uh, uh, to do that. But, yeah. That, oh, one thing, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, one thing that comes to mind for me is uh, web apps is possible with App Script, but I find that's yeah. a handy feature for very small, not very complex web apps, uh, popping up a Stripe uh, collection of money real quick and you're in and out or whatever. Um, what's your thoughts on scaling out uh, from a web app perspective? Where, where do you draw that line to do something else other than App Script? We use only web apps for, for certain gadgets on the internet. 
So we don't create f full web apps, uh, only to get some parts like uh, uh, a who is who or uh, 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 a calendar with, with courses, so something simple or a, a video carousel, uh, simple stuff, which enrich an, an internet page, um, but not as an app as its own. I, I think that, that that's what, what we do at least. There's some great resources as well that were shared in the community not too long ago around web apps and some of the considerations about concurrent users. Um, so it, it's it's an area that you know if you're, you're scaling it, it, it you're probably going to hit limits quite quickly if you could. Well, it depends. Like you said, when you're running it you know, to 37,000 users, yeah, you're probably going <laughs> to. Yeah. Uh, so let me, let me ask a question on top of that, because one of the things I always w worry about, and you know, I, I, I personally have famously you know, copied my own code many times and run it behind, bound behind many different sheets. And I know that's not what you're supposed to do, but sometimes that happens because that's the fastest, easy way to get things done. And I may not always have the, the, the same hygiene that you guys do as professional developers working for these large enterprises. But how do you distribute solutions across a number of users? One of my questions I always want, I always ask is why don't people use add-ons more or do you use add-ons a lot? Like Nick, you mentioned your solution. I believe that was an add-on, correct? That you actually deployed it as? Yeah. Um, when do you use add-ons? When do you not use add-ons? When do you shy away from them to get you know the same uh, you know, functionality out to 37,000 or how, how, how many other thousand users? Yeah, uh, I think it depends uh, on, on the users you, you are uh, yeah, hitting with your solution. If it has a, a, a great user base, a large user base, uh, yeah, then they need copy, copy, copy of your code. And, and that's not maintainable. In that case, an, an add on uh, yeah, is sufficient. So, uh, but in, in most projects, I think you only uh, uh, hit a few people like uh, a finance department or, uh, yeah, in, in that case, it, it doesn't really matter, uh, I think. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I think an add-on makes sense if you have a large user base, but for what's smaller. The, what's the sweet spot number there? I mean, you said you mentioned the finance team, if it's you know six folks in finance, sure, that, that may not be the case, but where do you find, is there a number that you find that, you know what, it, it's, it's a good way to deploy this functionality out, especially if it's like an international company or people who just don't, I mean, do you have an experience of a sweet spot of where an add-on becomes a best practice? Well, I, I think if you're uh, creating uh, new sheets uh, every time, uh, then an add-on uh, is the better solution. Uh, if you have like teen sheets and, and, and they stay there, yeah, mm -hmm. then it doesn't sure. really matter. Yeah. Another, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, Steve or Steve or Jasper, I just, do you, either one of you have a the, 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 the moment you start duplicating code, then then so it's 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 uh, not so much about, in my opinion at least, the the user base. It's more, uh, you know, a web app can have ten or ten thousand users as long as you have one code. But like Nick said, is if you're making copies of the sheet, the moment you start copying code, then you're on the wrong track. So, and that's that's from a developer perspective, from a citizen developer perspective. I don't, maybe a little bit blind for it, but I don't see the problem that much. But because the citizen developer, they, it's not they, they're not professional developers. They have other ways of working, and don't expect something from a citizen developer to keep working for years and years. So, which is an interesting point is the fact that we hear a lot of enterprise again it is is weary of that you know the free puppy syndrome right where they're weary of these codes that's why they're they sometimes kind of give app script a bad name because they're worried about you know maintaining it and you know thirty-seven thousand projects being out there that are basically doing the same thing um i was just gonna try to get real quick uh, i was just gonna say uh i usually try to sell the distribution thing with clients to say, just like in real estate, you have location, location, location. In this case, <laughs> distribution, distribution, distribution. Resolve that pain point. And then another thing too, a use case guys for the add-ons are, 
hey, I don't want anybody to hack the contain script code. Mm. I don't want anybody hacking the code. Well, you can protect that with an add-on, right? Yeah, and, and, and also what, what I see a lot is uh, that beca because the script is there, somebody abandoned it, doesn't mean it still has value. Right. Uh, but because it's there, people think it has value, and there, there aren't them, that many many ways of actually measuring there is there is value there. So one uh, suggestion I would make to uh, to IT is do cleanup. All right. So not so much uh, trying to maintain everything, but more like okay, if something is abandoned, figure it out and uh, delete it. So then at least what's there uh, is, is uh, then you have a better picture of what's relevant or not, because <laughs> you know, stuff there is not relevant. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Do you have any tips for that? I mean, I always hear the expression that I hear from IT folks, we can't put the genie back in the bottle, right? We, we have these scripts, scripts running everywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think there is a, a um, feature request for being able to measure uh, container bound scripts. Uh, so that that's one tip. Uh, we would like that, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty simple. Um, for me, there is not the, the genie out of the bottle. What what does that mean? That that people are actually if they're when is when is a citizen developer actually developing? If they create a macro, the moment they they build a whole application that becomes business critical, I think IT has a different problem. <laughs> So, so you know, for me, that my perspective is different. So, the, the I think so. developers will be. I think so, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I always think the the application is critical to that user. It may not be critical to the business, but it is to that user. Ah, but the user leaves. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> when it breaks, the IT hears about it and has to fix it. So now it's critical to IT to keep this user happy. So that's why. Yeah, but, but I still, I still <laughs> yes, but I'm, I'm looking. It's it's about the user. So if I build something, you now if if I build my own monitor stand uh, and it breaks, then obviously it's my problem. So it's not different. It's 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 because it's software. It doesn't immediately becomes property of the IT. IT also doesn't check the spelling of my document. So uh, I'm I'm more on that level. But the moment that I, as a citizen developer, create something that more people in the enterprise starting to use then as IT, you should know about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting the responsibility back to IT in that sense. And of course, I've been, I've been on the place where I've built something that multiple people use and didn't tell IT, so not completely pay there. But uh, an application should have a life cycle. That life cycle can be maintained with IT, with the user. So if the user leaves, anything the user leaves behind, IT should leave behind of should clean up because that's the task of IT. That's the offboarding process. So that and then you have 80% of the problems already solved, in my opinion. Right. I, I know I, I know you speak of experience because you lived through the Lotus Notes days when they <laughs> 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 it's still going. No, but it's it's I, I uh, the experience is that I find a lot of IT departments complaining about programs that are five years old. Yeah. And they do not dare to throw away because they, they do not know yeah. if there's any value. Right. And if they oh, cleaned it up for four years ago, there was no problem. We got Pascal's being uh, kept alive by the banking sector. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was talking to someone. They actually have an old desktop that runs the program, and someone had to create robot fingers to, <laughs> to interface it. Yeah. <laughs> um, fortunately, we're not at that point with that script. Uh, do you, do you see a change in terms of you, you know currently you're selling fish? Do you see are you starting to sell more fishing nets and fishing lines, and as in people want to learn about App Script more and more rather than just having the the solution, or is that culture not really there? Well. Uh I'm not sure that they want to understand uh, uh, what's capable of. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's something uh, I see often, but, but also security wise, uh, what are scopes and, and uh, uh, what privilege do you have with the scope? And so, so we actually train uh, uh, IT departments and security people uh, uh, how you can uh, a, a bit easier on add ons because. Uh, 
uh, 99% is that they block all add-ons and then uh, everything is scary. But yeah, to, to uh, give them a bit of knowledge about scopes, we, we try to avoid that, uh, to, to keep it more open. Um, but uh, coding itself, um, no, not really. They, they, they just want a solution. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the comment about the formulas and uh, the, the custom scripts. It's it's in. I see a lot of uh, people. You know, the, wh where I see an interest is in sheets because people who work with sheets you, sheets usually want a little bit more. They 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 sheet is almost a database, and if you work with a database, you're almost programming. So these people are they're they're on a, uh, a, uh, I don't know the word for that, um, but um those people they they would like to build a custom function for example stuff like that i don't see that much interest for somebody really wanting to build a web app or or stuff like that but more again but that, that's all again my interest is the integration part yeah i mean we know we do know that you know obviously that script is really versatile but like 80 percent of running use cases are being created with sheets in mind, right? So obviously the spreadsheet, like I said, the custom function, the macro recorder being right there, automating a spreadsheet, misusing a spreadsheet as a database is, is well known. It's well known, right? And it makes sense, right? They're so versatile, so quick and easy, and you do see it. And so I think Bill's right. I mean, people are gonna propagate, you know, challenging complicated right. sheets as much as well too, which hopefully is, I mean, it's not okay, but at least the user may have a fighting chance where I'm using things like data validations or formulas or things that are, are more maintainable by more people, right? So it's not as hard, but you're right. It's, it's the same story when you have the same sheet copied a hundred times out there. That's where I think templates come into play more. I think that's obviously where the add-ons come into play more. And, and, and Jasper, you did say it really well. If you're copying the sheet, you need to figure out how to, how to uh, you know, um, deploy your code more accordingly, which, is, which makes great sense. We actually had a a uh, customer who didn't realize the sheet with a contained app script was going to be copied 200 times. Yeah. They got to a point to say, we need to change the logic of app script in each of those. Yeah. Help. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to share, I just want to share that one thing you could do for the band-aid approach is use the, uh, well, basically there's an app script API. You just need the uh, script ID, I believe. And then it can loop through and push all that code there to stop the bleeding, the urgency, and then encourage them to convert to an add-on. Uh, so I have actually had a customer yell help before. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like is, cool. is that? Do you use the the script API, Nick or Jasper? Nick, do you use the script API just for maintaining scripts? For customers, uh, no, 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 not at the moment. But uh, yeah, we are looking at. It. So it, mm -hmm. I think in, in the nearby future uh, we're going to use it. I use it through class. I love the Nacho Man's uh, comment. Um, uh, we'll, we'll keep it off the air, <laughs> 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 but it's a great comment. You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Ugly, but it works. But that, that, that works. <laughs> Great cycle. We got we got a few minutes left, and um, I want to play the, uh, the the good listening vendor for a second. Um, you guys do this for a living, you know. Um, AppScript, love it or hate it, you know the warts as well as the pretty things. You know what's ugly. Uh, Jasper, you've already alluded to, alluded to something you'd like to see, Nick. What's uh, if if, uh, if the product team was listening, and I hope they are. If uh, the, the leadership is listening for AppScript, what would you tell them? What would you, if you had one thing you could fix or one thing you could change or one urgency, what is the next thing you would suggest they do to make your life easier and to make uh, deployments happen more often? And uh, short alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a future in, in, in the old editor. And uh, yeah, I, I use that a lot. And, and now you can sort with, with uh, yeah, move it up and, and, and uh, move it down. Uh, but yeah, I would like the, the alphabetic feature back. That's a really simple, sounds simple. Yeah. I have a difficult one. If you, if you... Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, being able to run to deploy an API and run it as the user. And I know the, it will be compl complicated to implement it because you need authentication, you, you need a token. But basically, I would be would like to be able to call the API, provide my token, and with the token, run it as the user. And then suddenly you can uh, prototype your API in AppScript, but also scale it. And I think they're technical, but maybe also business reasons why it would not happen, but it would be pretty nice. I'm, I hope I'm, make, I'm making sense, but it's... it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> that, that jars another question. Um, there's service accounts. When does one use service accounts versus run as me or run as developer? Well, uh, if, if I see it by, by large organizations, that they, they don't want to border a user with authorization steps. So in, in most cases, we deploy something as a functional account and use a service account uh, to, to uh, impersonate as the user. So yeah, just do not border uh, your employees, I think. Got it. Anything else? Steve, I want to find. Yeah. I want to find things in the script editor, not just in the script file I'm yeah. looking at. Right. Well, that makes that makes sense too. That's why, I think, like I said, I think the guys use uh, you take their code off and use it in class and manage it in GitHub, and you obviously get that. You know, one of the things, and again, you you can argue both sides of this coin. The IDE was is meant to be simple and streamlined, and hopefully approachable for citizen developers. Obviously, that may leave folks like yourself a little bit wanting as far as some of the feature functionality. In fact, just and this a little bit of my opinion, but also we've heard some feedback is you know the new IDE is a little simpler than the old one because it has cut out some of the you know the, a little bit of the, the fanfare and some of the complexity before. So that that's good, but you're right, it definitely kind of uh, loses some things there. Um, so there, there there is a trade off there. I think the one I have is with a new Google or GWAO uh, add-ons, um, if I want to interact, let's say, with a sheet, I think it times out after 30 seconds. Could I have another 30 seconds, please? <laughs> because some sheets are bigger than others and need more crunch time. <laughs> yeah, I've seen sometimes where you also see like your custom functions run perfectly one day and the next day the same right. yeah. functions doing the same exact things don't finish and it kind of, it leaves you curious. But again, that's, uh, you know, Scaling to the world is kind of a hard thing. Yeah. I, I think also an, a nice one is uh, the ability to, to uh, uh, get more resources. So we have a lot of customers who are willing to pay, uh, but, but there is no uh, way you can get some more resources. Uh, yeah, because we are running out of time sometimes. Yeah, yeah. There's, I, I know there are certain things that you can actually get um, you know, quota bumps in, but yeah, a lot of them are, are, are fixed for a reason. And, that, and that's one of the things I think, you know, Jasper, you summed it up earlier. There's a lot of folks that don't have the credit card or the budget to do things in other tools, and this works well. Mm -hmm. Think about the other way around, where we're trying to let the entire world run free resources across, you know, the, the, the world to make that possible. So it's kind of hard. So anyway, so yeah, but there's anything, like I said, you know, I always encourage folks to hit the issue tracker keep uh, responding in there. If we don't respond by keep letting us know, provide us with that feedback. Um, you know, it's hard to make a platform that you know, works for everybody from every level of skill, but uh, we definitely appreciate the feedback and uh, and keep that coming. So um, if you have anything else, let us know. Anybody checking in, let us know as well too. Uh, fortunately, we've got Steve Basil in the chat. who's keeping a very close eye on the uh viewers <laughs> suggestions yeah so um, shout, out, shout out to steve uh, he mentioned the secure data connector thanks steve for for tuning in also want to welcome uh steve Bowman, uh, who is new came over from the microsoft excel world and is now doing app script so just wanted to thank him for his comments and tuning in uh, welcome to the community uh to something else just to highlight so jasper has um uh, in terms of the, 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 you know uh, an aspect we we talked about in terms of the the tool set he uses he's um he's kindly written this up uh, in a, a blog post so you can um you can get more details 
about that there. Um, and you can uh, follow Jasper's work as well. Um, find out all his tips and tricks. Um, and become an expert, just like Jasper. There is a lot of info. Uh, there is a lot of information in that blog post. Uh, I, I think it's a nice solution. It's also a little bit showing off, like okay, this is possible. Um, um, another, if it's not clear, send me an email and uh, I will respond. Let's, let me put it that way. Yeah. Actually, maybe a great way to close out the show. Um, how can we reach either one of you if anybody wants to? Ask you for advice or ask you for services, ask you for help. You want to quickly plug, how do we find you? Uh, I have a web, uh, website with a contact page. Email is the easiest way. Perfect. Uh, it's, it's described there how you can contact me. And uh, I usually respond uh, pretty quickly. Nick, how about yourself? Yeah. How, do we find, how do we find you quickly? Yeah, LinkedIn or, or the Next of Aids, uh page. Perfect. And uh, yeah, the, the team is there, so uh, you can reach me if you look at the team page. And uh, if you want to uh, reach Charles, uh, my smooth segue into uh, Google I.O. is uh, um, coming next week. And you can uh, find Charles in the program in an AMA uh, uh, session, so you can ask him anything. Please. Absolutely. That's, Martin, that's a great plug. Thank you. So I, I have a session which they trim down um, from a long period to a short period to fit the new segment. So um, probably not as interesting as a, it, it's, it's quick, but, but please tune into that. But uh, more importantly, we do have an Ask Me Anything where um, uh, Matt, who is our uh, program manager for the entire platform, and my boss Olaf will be in there. So if there are things you want to see, things you want to ask for, things you want to know, do tune in. Um, we've got an hour of Q&A. There's also going to be a Dory set up so you can ask beforehand your hardest, toughest questions. Uh, Steve is going to join us as well, too, I believe. So please do that. That'd be, that'd be awesome. You can always ask him here, uh, but you can ask him there, and you can get people way more senior than I, who know a lot more things than me, to answer those questions. I think a previous guest, uh, Christian uh, Schalk, um, has a app sheet and maybe AMP uh, I.O., Yep, he's got a session as well, too. So yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely tune into IO. Martin, thanks for bringing it up. Steve, thanks for, for mentioning it. And uh, hopefully see you all there, too. But hopefully uh, we catch you back here for another episode. Yes. Uh, so we're still plotting behind the scenes. But um, we have so much fun putting the show together. I'm sure it won't be long before we're back again. Uh, but thanks, Nick and Jasper, for uh, sharing your time and your thoughts and your experiences. Um, it, it's been a real pleasure having you on. Uh, and uh, who knows, we might see if we can find another Dutch person. Uh, we have a nice person. We're starting to run out of them. If you are Dutch and you'd like to come on the show, TU uh, App Script mm -hmm. Info. Uh, um, <laughs> um, I'm, I may even start learning Dutch. But uh, uh, until next time, happy scripting. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.